So we want to keep working on making our RMI chat client. In the last video, we got it to the point where it goes through some dialog boxes and sets up, gets the user's name and the server that they have connected to by connecting to the machine that they ask for. We were able to run it and show that at least it seems to work, doesn't crash. Okay. But now we need to actually set up a GUI for this. So we know that at some point we are going to have to set the stage and that is always a new JFX app dot primary stage. We can have a title here and that title will be our RMI chat and then we'll make a scene. New scene 600 by 600 perhaps? Okay. We can import that. What do we need inside of here? Well, I think the bare minimum we need is we need a text area that will show the chat. We need a text field where the user can type on and then when they hit enter, it will send their chat message. And we need a list, a list view of the other users that are in there so that they can select what users they want their chat to go to. Okay, that's our, that's our goal here. Well, because I want them to be able to interact, for example, with these methods out here, I'm not gonna nest those inside of stage. I'm actually gonna create them outside of here. So I'm going to make our chat area with a T. Chat area is a new text area. Um, okay, and, oh, one thing I do need to do, we got our server, but we have to connect, and the this, and so we have our connect method, and it just returns unit, so that will make the server know that we are present, and then it will tell everyone else that we are now there. So we have our chat area. I would like a list of all the users, which is a new uh, list view. And we can actually pass this things because we have our clients. Now our clients up here, or have we made our clients yet? Oh, we have not made our clients yet. We should probably do that. So var clients equals server dot get client and actually that should be refactored because that should definitely be plural because it is giving us back a sequence okay import list view scala fx version there we go so we have a user list we have a chat area we have these clients here, which we will be able to update because when the client updates, we're going to, to change that and then probably need to update the, the user list. Uh, and then we need our text field. So I'll call it the chat field. And the chat field is just a new text field. Now, just to be proper, so the text field they're gonna type into the text area, they probably shouldn't be able to edit. So, We'll set editable to false so that people can't directly edit that. We have our user list, our chat field. Those are the different elements that we need inside of our GUI. And we're going to have to have it so that when the chat field, when they hit enter, which calls the action on it, we're going to need something to happen. Okay, we can import our action event and we probably have to add that most important import when you're doing Scala FX code. Includes dot underscore to make that happy. Okay, so we'll put some question marks there. 
see what that does. And then we can go ahead and lay out this GUI. So what I'm actually going to do for this is I'm going to make one border pane. I'm going to put the field across the top. I'm going to put the list on the left side and I'm going to put the area in the center. And both the area and the list need to go inside of scroll panes. So I'm going to make a chat scroll, which is a new scroll pane. Import that and then chat scroll dot content equals the area. I will make a uh, user scroll, which is also a new scroll pane, and then user scroll dot content equals the user list. And then I'm going to make my border pane. So we'll make a Scala FX border pane here, and then I can say border dot top is equal to the chat field. Border dot left is equal to the user scroll, because I want this to be the scroll uh, one. And border dot center is equal to the chat scroll. Now all we have to do is set root equal to border. And that should set up our GUI. I've typed a fair bit of code here. Let's run it. So I'm going to go ahead and run the server. Turns out that if I run the uh, client without running the server, we're going to get an exception there. So this asks me what machine. I say localhost. I have to give it a name. I'll say Mark. And here's our GUI right now. Hmm. This isn't quite uh, ideal as far as the sizing of things, but I'm good with it for now. We can we won't worry about that currently. And of course, if I type something and hit enter, it crashes because we have unimplemented code in there. Okay. So what needs to go inside of this unimplemented code? So we have unimplemented code there, and we have it down here inside of our message and inside of our client update. What needs to go into this? Well, uh, first off, we should probably check to make sure that the text in the chat field isn't empty. So chat field dot text dot trim non-empty. If it's empty, I don't want to do anything. Okay. If it's not empty, then we'll go ahead and do stuff with it. So I need to figure out who this is supposed to go to. So I'm going to set some recipients. And that is based upon the user list. It has a selection model. And I put the parentheses, once again, that calls apply. I could also do dot value if I wanted. But in these videos, I'm using the apply method because you know what the apply method is. Uh, and then this has the selected items that are available. Now it's possible nothing has been selected. Okay, what would that mean? Well, that means that we should probably send this message to everyone. In which case, I'm going to send to the server to the server a public message. Our client is this, and the text that I want to send them is chat fields text. I'll probably go with go ahead and trim it like that. Okay. And in which case the recipients is going to be all of the clients. Okay. What about in this other case? Why is this? Oh, I'd have just empty instead of is empty. Okay. What about here? Well, in this situation, the selection model, its selected items is not empty. So I just want the recipients to be the selection model. Do the apply. Apply. 
selected not items but indices. Okay, those are going to give us back all of the indexes for the different things that are selected. And then I'm going to map those and I'm going to take each index i and pull that out of clients. Okay, so I could write this as i rocket clients. But then we might, and then clients, sorry, sub i. But then we might remember, oh, clients, all collections are actually functions. And so I can just simplify it by doing that. And that will pass that through to it. And then let's get a sequence. Um, interesting, this is not allowing me to use this as a function. Oh, probably because, no, what is our clients is, it's just a sequence. I wonder if I need an index sequence in order to be able to treat it like a function. It's possible. Okay, anyway, our recipients now is a sequence of remote client. Okay, so it will be all the things that we've selected to chat with. Now here, if we did this public message, it turns out the way we've written public message right now, it actually sends things out to everyone. Um, but what if we didn't send it out to everyone? I guess what I could do right now, um, how do I want to do this? We'll just go ahead. I'm gonna go through and send it to all the recipients. So, I want to run through each of these recipients and what I want to do with them is I want to try to do some code. I'm trying to do it because things might fail and I want to take that recipient and I want to send them a message. It comes from this and the text is once again this text message here. It might not succeed, okay? it might fail, in which case we would need to catch it. I really wish that this would do some indentation on that for me, but apparently it doesn't want to. Maybe if I put that there, okay. What could go wrong? Well, these are calling things on remote objects and every method of a remote object can throw a remote exception. Um, in which case, then, I need to just take our chat area and uh, append something to its text. So, we have an append text here, so I'll just go with that. Uh, I'll just append onto it, couldn't send to one recipient. Holy cow, having typing problems tonight. Okay, control shift O to bring in the remote exception. This code is, now at least it seems to be somewhat happy. Okay, there we go. Uh, and when we're done with our chatting, after we've sent a message to everyone, we should clear out that chat. So we set up the GUI. We've done this. Um, last thing we need to do is implement these uh, methods right here and then test it. We'll come back in the next video and we'll try to get this finally working and test it to make sure that it's happy.